My name's Davina Clark. I am a violinist and I actually specialise in historical performance, so historically informed performance and Baroque music. So I've been on this journey now probably for about um, 15 years. I started the violin at the age of three, like many of us, started an instrument very young and did the whole journey through actually modern training. But it was only actually when I left university and started freelancing in London that I really felt like something was actually missing and I didn't feel fully satisfied with um, what I was really achieving musically. And I also grew up at the same time as playing the violin as actually a singer as well, a soprano. So I'd always loved early music. I got a choral scholarship to Cambridge. I, I, I loved you know, um, Bird, Talis, Palestrina, Purcell, Handel, things like that. And I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, the strings sound totally different in these recordings. And obviously I'd learned a lot about music from, from the Baroque and Renaissance period, but I'd never really delved into the whole performance practice side of things. And it was only then really in my early 20s that I realised that there was a whole other route that I could go down called historically informed performance. So I, I sort of found this out and actually contacted somebody that I knew that was a violinist who actually uh, was a Baroque violinist and she gave me some lessons. And I enrolled in Dartington for a summer school, which was complete sort of throw myself into it. Never done it before. Borrowed a violin, borrowed a brought violin and brought bow. Did that and then thought, right, I'm going to audition for the Royal Academy to do a master's. Taught myself and then got a scholarship there. And that's sort of, not the rest is history, but I learnt with Rachel Podger and Simon Standage there. Had an amazing time. And from there, I ended up in the world of historically informed performance. And I've never been happier. I absolutely adore it. And for me, I'm sure this might be another one of your questions, but for me, it's just, I love it so much because everybody is so invested in what we're doing. It's so niche and so particular, but it's always so fresh and vibrant. And no matter what age anybody is that's doing it, we all come at it with such fresh ears and eyes and brains really and there's just so much excitement on how to interpret this music slightly differently so that's that's sort of my whistle stop whirlwind journey into music fantastic so you said that you trained in modern violin but you said that you'd always had a real passion for early music from a young age so what was it particularly about early music and historically informed performance that you felt most attracted to and why did you want to go down that route? I think for me, talking very simply about music from the Baroque and Renaissance period, as a young child or um, as a teenager, I loved listening to a lot of choral music. So I became obsessed with things like the Talis Scholars and the Sixteen. And I think for me, my voice was quite, as a Soprano is a very early voice, not much vibrato, fairly straight. So I had always start, you know, sung music from that period. I'm not singing Verdi operas. It's more kind of Handel and Purcell and things like that. But for me, what attracted me was listening to those recordings by the 16, etc. was the purity of the sound. And I know a lot of that's to do really with the writing of, of this, you know, beautiful homophonic writing of the Renaissance period. But then taking it a step further when I got a little bit more learned in in the subject, I think it's just, it's a different sound world for me. I think play on gut strings is so exciting. It's a very earthy, for those listeners who don't know, it's a very earthy, not raw sound, but it's very rich, but also a very wide colour palette, lots of beautiful different tones. And in a way, you have to work harder, I think, as an instrumentalist on these instruments. It's no mean feat playing on gut strings. It looks exactly the same as a normal violin, but the strings look a bit different. But you have to work twice as hard, actually, just to get a good sound out of it. But that makes it even more rewarding. And when you hit that sweet spot of, you know, the right... It's like, I don't know 
hitting a tennis ball right in the centre of the racket or hitting teeing off and hitting golf right in the centre of the club and you just think like, oh, that's an amazing feeling. When you're on that beautiful, uh, basically it's like riding a wave, I suppose. And one, once you can get into that sound world, I, for me, there's no going back. And it's so amazing being around like-minded people who are all playing on these amazing instruments that were built in the Brock period and or at least copies of that and that we're all on the same wavelength and wanting the same out of this journey really. Amazing so you, you've already talked about some of the technical aspects of um, playing on gut strings so you both you, you play on both historical and modern violins so I wondered are you comfortable switching between both instruments or do you find are there any other challenges alternating between both whether that's stylistically or whether that's a technical thing or more of a a setup well there are several things so when I first started playing the baroque violin I found it actually very difficult switching between two violins the setup was very different so usually on a baroque violin you don't have a chin rest or really a shoulder rest Um, The fingerboard is a little bit fatter, it's a little bit shorter. Obviously, you've got the bow, which is different, but that, that for me, was not a problem at all. For me, it was this constant switching between modern Baroque, modern Baroque, on a day-to-day basis. And I found that really, really hurt my neck. It really started to injure me because of this different setup. I think, you know, having been trained as a modern violinist, your muscles are built in your hand and arm in a certain way and suddenly you're using different muscles basically especially to hold the violin you know in the baroque period people wore a lot of thick ruffs and ruffles and big clothing and that in itself acted as a shoulder rest so now it's a bit bonkers that we come to this and say oh well they didn't have shoulder rest so let's not use it well i mean if you're just wearing a t-shirt it's sort of not really going to work for you like that so i found that very very difficult and then to combat that or to counteract that, I decided that I wanted to have the same setup in both modern and Baroque violin, basically. So in order to do that, I use a chamois leather kind of rolled up as my shoulder rest. And then I don't use a chin rest on either modern or Baroque violin. So for me, the switch over between two instruments, regardless of the strings, that doesn't really make a difference, is very, very simple. When I'm playing more advanced repertoire, not only on the modern violin, but also on gut strings. So I do a play in two orchestras, but with Sir John Elliott Gardner, English Baroque soloist, and the other one, Orchestre Révolutionnaire et Romantique. And that orchestra specialises in romantic music but on gut strings on original instruments so we do a lot of music by Berlioz and Beethoven and obviously as the writing style becomes more and more adventurous what they're acquiring and expecting from the players is more and more and it's almost a little bit like trying to Basically, what I was going to go with this is that I then do use a shoulder rest for um, much more advanced music because I need to get up the instrument. I need to get up the fingerboard. In Baroque music, you're usually in really first to fourth position. It's not really going to go beyond that. The music is technically difficult, don't get me wrong, but it's the range, the scope, the range of the violin is not is not as large as it is in modern music or certainly in later romantic music. So for that, I do use a shoulder rest. But generally speaking, I try to keep the same setup between my modern and Baroque violin. And therefore, it means I can swap between them with such ease. And I don't get daunted by it. The other thing is that I also, I think it's changed since I've been involved in historically informed performance. I've changed my outlook on how to interpret music as well. So if I'm playing Mozart symphonies with, let's say, the Academy of Ancient Music, and then I'm asked to go and play Mozart symphonies with the London Symphony Orchestra, I find it quite difficult because the the mental approach to music from this period is not the same in modern orchestras as it is to speciality period orchestras. But I would say that I don't change how I interpret it. I still come at it from a historically informed stance, basically. And there are a lot of wonderful modern groups who do play on modern instruments, but they interpret, they they have the understanding of what was uh, required in in the Baroque era or classical era, and they can strip it back down to the, the basics again.